So today we're going to be talking about similar right triangles. And specifically, we're going to say, if I have a right triangle, and I were to drop an altitude, in other words, construct something that is exactly to the vertex here, and yet perpendicular to the opposite side, I produce three triangles, baby bear, mama bear, and papa bear. And it turns out that all three of these triangles are, in fact, similar. How do I know that? Well, I don't know what angle measure this is. I don't want to choose a number because I want this to be specific for no case. I want it to be general. So let's say I just put a little squiggly mark in this angle, and that represents that angle. I know that if this is a right angle and this is a squiggly, that this angle will be complementary to that. They'll add up to 90 degrees to make this whole triangle add up to 180. And since in this little baby triangle I've got a right angle and the circle, my third angle is going to be forced, right? It's going to be whatever is complementary to the circle. Well, given what I drew in my first triangle, the squiggly and the circle are complementary, so squiggly is going to go there. Similarly, in my mama triangle, if my squiggly is here and my right angle is here, that angle has to be the measure of circle, so that circle and squiggly together make 90 degrees. If I then extrapolate this to say, I'm going to now draw these three right triangles, the large, the medium, and the small, and I'm going to orient them such that they're all oriented the same way, with a squiggly on top, the right angle off to the bottom left, and the circle in the right. I'm going to be able to create relationships among the sides. So to begin with, let's label this side A and this side B and this whole side C and then I also need to bring in some other little parts here. Let's call this H, because that's the altitude of the height. And we'll call this side Y, this little segment from here to here, is Y. And we'll say that this part over here is X. So that's not going to show up so well, so I'm going to fill that in a little bit. So what this gives me the ability to do is use these same letterings here. In other words, in the biggest triangle, I'm saying that the side opposite squiggly is B. The hypotenuse is C. And the side opposite the circle is A. Then I'm going to say my middle triangle, so this one here. I see that the side opposite circle is X. The side opposite squiggly is H. And the hypotenuse this time is A. And then for the smallest triangle, side opposite circle is H. Side opposite squiggly is Y, and B is the hypotenuse. Because each of these triangles has the three same angles, I can say that all three of these triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. And of course, that means that if they're similar, that I can create proportions of sides. So for example, I could say that A is to X. They're both on the left-hand side. They're in corresponding locations for these two triangles. So A is to X as, and then I need to pick another pair of sides. Well, maybe I could say C and A, because those are the same two triangles, and those are in corresponding locations. So I could say A is to X as C is to A. Now, why am I doing this? What's the point of all this? Well, 
what it gives me the ability to do is then use the cross products, or cross multiplication, to say that a squared is equal to c times x. And then, of course, I can solve that further to say that a is equal to square root of c times x. What does that mean, though? Well, you'll remember when we did geometric mean a little bit ago that we can find the geometric mean of two numbers by multiplying them and taking the square root. So really, this means that a is the geometric mean between x and c. So if I take this segment and this whole segment of c, I can find the value of a by simply knowing those two parts. For example, if I start with this scenario, and I'm looking for a, and I know that this whole side is, for example, 25. It can work out well for me. No, it's not. Let's try that again. I know this whole side is 16. And this side, this little piece here is 9, so that this part over here is 7, that I can say that a is going to equal the square root of 9 times 16. So a is the square root of 144, so a must be exactly 12 units long. Now I can create this same relationship for two other scenarios. This is the relationship of a. I can do the same thing with b. I can say that B is to C as Y is to B. Do my cross multiplying. B squared is equal to CY. So B is equal to square root of C times Y. Similar relationship to the previous one. But this time what we're talking about is the right-hand side. So, for instance, say that this is 4 and this is 9, and I'm looking for B. I'd say, okay, well, I need to find the relationship between this side and this whole side. So, I'm going to change this. I'm going to say that that piece was 5. So if I want to find b, I need to find 4 is to this whole side, which would be 9. Therefore, b is equal to the square root of 4 times 9. b is equal to the square root of 36. So b would be equal to 6 units in length. And the third scenario is I can find the relationships involving h. So I can say that h is to x as y is to h. Left side is to left side, as bottom side is to bottom side. I can cross multiply and discover that h is the geometric mean between x and y, such that if I know that this splits into, say, 5 and 20, I could find h by saying h is equal to the square root of 5 times 20, square root of 100, so h is equal to 10. Now, the challenge here is how to remember these relationships, because maybe we won't have all these pretty colors. So here's the way I do it. If you picture this pink segment C, it has an end point here and an end point here. If you picture the yellow segment X, it has an endpoint here and an endpoint there. The blue segment Y has an endpoint there and an endpoint there. And what we're looking at is the segments that extend from the right angle. The one that extends from the right angle in this direction takes me to this corner. So this segment A 
is the geometric mean of the two segments whose endpoints it touches, x and c. b, on the other hand, is the geometric mean of the two segments whose endpoints it touches, y and c. Notice that it doesn't really touch an endpoint of x. And lastly, h, the hypotenuse, excuse me, the height or altitude, is in fact the geometric mean between the two endpoints that it touches. It touches x endpoint and y endpoint. It doesn't touch an endpoint of C. Hope this helps you understand the application of similar right triangles.